If you follow any gun page on social media, play Call of Duty, or simply like to type hateful shit into your keyboard at 2 in the morning with Cheeto-covered fingers in your mom's basement, chances are that you have heard of the Honey Badger. A 7-inch direct impingement PDW chambered in 300 blackout with a cult-like following. Today, we're checking out Kevin Brittingham's love child. To understand the Honey Badger, first you have to try and understand the mind of Kevin. Now, Kevin is not your average guy. Think of a middle-aged dude, bald head, tiger stripe pants, flip-flops, and riding a skateboard. Originally designed during Kevin's time with Advanced Armament Corporation, the goal of the Badger was to create a suppressed PDW to potentially replace HK's MP5 SD. Obviously that didn't happen, but out of that, the civilian market was given one of the most iconic 300 blackouts to date. In 2017, Kevin Brittingham founded the company Q. You know, that giant fucking letter you see plastered on all other firearms. The Honey Badger was redesigned and the 2.0 was given life. Before we dive into the Honey Badger, I have to give a special thank you to two of our channel sponsors. Black Dot Ammunition has been a channel sponsor for a while now, and without them, these videos would not be possible. They were nice enough to sound out the ammo for today's review, as they do with all of my videos. If you're looking to pick up some quality ammo at an affordable price, head over to their site and use my discount code 715 Tactical at checkout to save some money on your order. They stock all of the popular calibers that you're looking for and get them to your door lickety split. Looking for the right bag for your PDW can be kind of challenging. I've been using this bag called the Bite from Lynx Defense and it has definitely become my go-to. Lynx Defense offers bags for any situations, EDC, range trips, and even storage. Head over to their website and see what they have to offer. As far as my relationship with Q, I've talked with Kevin quite a bit and I was given this honey badger and two suppressors. With that being said, this review will be 100% unbiased and brutally honest. If you don't like hearing that, you're free to leave at any moment and don't let that door hit you in the ass on the way out. So big shout out to Kevin and the dudes at Q for making all these haters jealous. Let's dive in. As we do in our normal review fashion, let's start at the front and work our way to the back. Sitting at the end of the muzzle is Q's signature muzzle brake, the Cherry Bomb. Not only a muzzle brake, but also a rock solid option for mounting their QD suppressors, like this Trash Panda or Thunder Chicken. Q believes in tapers, and I can respect that. Tapers are great for keeping everything concentric and keeping carbon buildup off of the threads. Nobody likes a carbon lock can, and this will prevent that from happening. The Cherry Bomb can utilize a half inch socket in the front for easy installation and is also backwards compatible with your standard 90 degree shoulder barrels. As far as a standalone muzzle brake, definitely not my favorite. The 360 degrees of ports is nice for the fact that you don't have to time it, but on a 7 inch barrel, it is very loud and flashy. In my opinion, this gun was made to be run suppressed, so I don't plan on ever using it with just a cherry bomb. If you live in one of those commie run states that doesn't allow suppressors, Q offers a few different options, like the bottle rocket, which is basically a muzzle brake for a muzzle brake, and the whistle tip, which is their blast mitigation device. They both thread right onto the cherry bomb. Working our way down, you'll see the stainless steel 7 inch barrel. What's cool about this barrel is that it sports the 1 in 5 fast twist rate. I talked about the 1 in 5 twist in my previous video about the MCX Virtus. That 1 in 5 twist really helps to stabilize the heavier subsonic loads. Subsonic 300 blackout is going to be anywhere from 190 grains all the way up to 220. I run a lot of 220s due to them being scary quiet suppressed. The 1 in 5 twist rate has no problem throwing those things downrange with some force and not making the round tumble through the air. The barrel has a 25 degree taper at the muzzle and is compatible with mil spec receivers. For a gun that was designed to be suppressed, they did the gas block right. The Badger has an adjustable gas block to optimize performance with today's different types of ammunition. Keep in mind, this gas block wasn't designed to be adjusted on the fly, like a piston driven gun. I haven't had any issues with it so far, and I hope to keep it that way. Let's move on to the handguard. The Honey Badger has a 6 inch M lock handguard made from 6061 T6 aluminum. I don't have any gripes with this handguard, besides the fact that it's so fucking short. Your mounting space is very limited, but that's expected with a short platform like this. I have well over 1,000 rounds through this gun and the handguard is held up great. It hasn't shifted or come loose. I have a clear anodized micro rain from Cloud Defensive mounted on here. Awesome little weapon light in a perfect fit for the Badger. 
I highly recommend Cloud Defensive if you're looking for a weapon light. The inside diameter of the handguard is 1.54 inches, so unfortunately it won't fit over any of Q's 7.62 suppressors. I'm really hoping that Q comes out with the SD handguard for the Badger one of these days. I know Q makes the Honey Badger SD with a smaller diameter can that fits inside of the handguard, but I would like to see it maybe like a 2 inch MCX Virtus type of handguard for the Badger. Kevin, make my day man. The clear anodized 7075 aluminum receivers of the Honey Badger are pure machined art. I love the look of this gun. From the clear anodizing to the precision cuts, this thing is done right. But here's my one complaint. It's not ambidextrous. I like having ambi features on a gun, and man, this kind of broke my heart not having them on here. If you're familiar with Nevesky's Ghetto Blaster or Space Invader, it has the ambi mag release and right side bolt release. Not sure why Q didn't include those, but the layout is still very effective. If you are familiar with AR controls, the Honey Badger will feel right at home. I'm gonna call it effectiveness through simplicity. Don't fix what isn't broken, right? Right. If the Ghetto Blaster were to have Q's 1 in 5 twist barrel in it, it would be the definition of my perfect 300 blackout PDW. The Honey Badger has a flared magwell, which I think they call the Porn Star. If you haven't noticed yet, Q is pretty witty with the names they give their products. Absolute genius marketing. Anyway, the Badger has a right side mag release, left side bolt catch and release, and integrated trigger guard. You can see the lack of a forward assist, and Q did that to save some weight. This gun is stupid light, and I mean only 4 pounds 8 ounces light. This is definitely a gun you could sling up and carry all day if you had to. I have to give some respect to the engineers for creating such a light gun. When it comes to the clear anodized finish, imperfections in the finish are more readily seen. That's completely normal for clear ano. If you are one of those dudes that cries over a scratch or any imperfection in the finish, this gun doesn't deserve to have you as an owner. I changed out the Magpul Slim grip that came stock on the Badger to this B5 Systems grip. B5 grips have more of a straight profile and they work out really well for me. I really dig the texture on these things too. The slim mag pull that comes with the Badger, well, I wasn't exactly feeling it. Now Q teamed up with the guys over at Radian for the addition of the Ambi Talon 70 degree selector and the Q branded Raptor charging handle. I guess Kevin wasn't quite convinced that a 45 degree safety selector was safe enough and decided to do a special 70 degree selector. I get it, safety first. It's easy to manipulate and the color matches nicely. Sitting on top of my Badger is a Trigicon MRO on a Unity fast mount. It's a skyscraper, but trust me, it serves a purpose. These taller Unity mounts really help when shooting with night vision. They also give me more of a heads up shooting style, which feels more natural than smashing your face into a stock to look through your standard co-witness mount. The trigger is a Geisley two-stage match trigger, and it is fucking light. A little too light for my liking, but overall, a very nice trigger. The older Honey Badgers used to ship with the American Trigger Flat Gold Trigger. Not sure why they switched over to the Geisleys, but they did. I wouldn't mind a little bit heavier of a trigger, but I can make do with this. Q just recently released their own trigger, and I wouldn't mind checking one out to see how it is compared to other triggers on the market. Let's talk about the ATF's favorite piece of the Honey Badger, the infamous Q Pistol Brace. On October 6th of 2020, the Alphabet Boys sent Q a cease and desist letter stating the Honey Badger pistol is a short barreled rifle. Now we all know the difference between a stock and a brace. My friend, this is definitely a brace. Q ceased production of the Honey Badger pistol, making it unobtainium and made an official statement on the 14th. Even though the day after Q's official statement, the ATF gave their cease and desist letter a 60 day suspension. Q waited to start up production again until the ATF made a final decision. Surprise, surprise, the Honey Badger pistol is in fact not an SBR. Imagine how the guys at Nevesky were feeling when the ATF gave the cease and desist to Q. Unlike Nevesky's Ghetto Blaster and Space Invader, the Honey Badger only has two positions. Too short and way too fucking long. If this thing could have a third option in the middle, I would be a huge fan of this brace. You can see how short the buffer tube is, which forces you to really get your nose to the charging handle if you don't want to cheek the struts of the brace. I'm not the biggest fan of this. Yeah, it looks cool as hell, but in the gun world, looks aren't everything. 
unless you're into Strike Industries parts, then looks are life. Another thing to mention about the buffer tube, shield, housing, or whatever the fuck you want to call this thing, the edges are just a little on the sharp side. You really have to develop your own technique for shooting this thing. The Badger utilizes a proprietary buffer system. It's not your standard buffer and spring. Q had to develop their own system to run in the short housing. Takedown is kind of a bitch due to the buffer spring being under pressure and it wants to bend every which way. Be careful not to bend the spring during disassembly either. Replacement springs are available, but trust me, they're hard to come across. Let's cover some final thoughts on Q's Honey Badger. I've had this gun for a while now and waited to put out the review. I did that for a number of reasons, but primarily, I wanted to run a minimum of 1,000 rounds through it. With the great ammo depression we just went through, 300 black was a bitch to get, even with an ammo sponsor. After 1,000 plus rounds, here's what I have to say. The Honey Badger is one hell of a soft shooting firearm with a suppressor and when it's tuned properly. Without a can, it kind of sucks when it comes to recoil and how loud it is. But again, this thing wasn't exactly intended to be run without a can. In fact, I think it's kind of sacrilegious to run it without one. Obviously with running a can, your gun is going to get dirty fast. And through my experience with the Badger, it doesn't like running dirty. It's definitely a little on the finicky side. Now keep in mind this is a sample size of one. So maybe others have had better luck with reliability while dirty, you got but jam. my bolt didn't want to go all the way home. Even dropping the open bolt with the bolt release, it still wouldn't seat all the way. Now a simple cleaning and a little oil took care of that. Now compared to the MCX Virtus that I just reviewed, that thing ran in any condition. Then again we're kind of comparing apples to oranges because the MCX is a piston gun or the Badger is DI. Just make sure you keep your Badger clean for the most part. From an accuracy standpoint, the 1 in 5 twist stainless barrel really yields some great results inside of 100 yards. This is a PDW, personal defense weapon, not a DMR or a precision rifle. I think the Badger really shines as a truck gun, home defense, or a hog slayer. As long as you keep it clean. 300 black is great for dumping a hog on his face. I'd like to take a trip and run this on a hog hunt. Now, this puppy comes with a $3,000 price tag. Would I spend three grand on it? Maybe for the nostalgia of having a honey badger, but if my budget only allowed me to purchase one or two guns, I'm gonna have to say this would not be one of them. This gun was not made for the pores. I'll say that. The reliability when dirty, the length of the brace, all of the proprietary parts, it just doesn't exactly fit the bill for me for a go-to or do-all weapon. Everything else about the gun does, but those are pretty important factors. Another thing I want to mention is the excessive amount of play between receivers. And the brace isn't exactly tight either. There's a lot of slop in there compared to my Nevesky Space Invader. That's a very solid, tight feeling firearm. The Badger has a lot of play between the upper and the lower and in the brace, which kind of blew my mind, especially with the $3,000 price tag. If you're dying to get something by Q, I would highly suggest that you check out the stupid cousin of the Honey Badger, the Q Sugar Weasel. You can save some bank and still have that giant fucking letter Q on the side of your gun. At the end of the day, the Badger is an extremely fun gun to shoot, and it makes everyone jealous that you have one. This is one of my wife's favorite guns to shoot, and it's very easy for her to shoot as well. She doesn't have an issue with the brace, so that just goes to prove everyone is different, and maybe the Badger will work better for you than it did for me. You really have to get out there and try things for yourself. I'm simply here as a guide. A guide to show you cool shit and give you my two cents. Not make up your mind for you. Remember that. I hope you guys were able to take something away from this video or simply enjoyed the show. As always, thank you for stopping in, stay vigilant, and I will see you next time.